I've been away in my beautiful, my beautiful balloon, balloon. Hi friends and welcome back to my channel, Michelle Gay Science Teacher. And today we're talking about hot air balloons. In today's video, I'm doing a lesson from Scholastic Super Science. If you're interested in Scholastic Super Science, I will leave a link below and I will leave a discount code so that you can get 10% off their magazine with the code that I leave. Including with that, you will also be able to use all the digital resources until the end of the year. I hope that you can use this because Scholastic Super Science is a fun magazine for students in grades 3rd through 6. Well, let's get started talking about hot air balloons today. Hot air balloons have been around for a long time since the 1700s. In 1783, the King of France, Louis XVI, and his queen, Marie, Marie Antoinette, they gathered together at the palace in France to watch the first flight of a hot air balloon with passengers. The passengers were a duck, a sheep, and a rooster. Can you believe that? This hot air balloon was constructed by two brothers named Montegolfier. These two brothers constructed the hot air balloon and they sent it off. And believe it or not, the passengers returned safely. That flight went about two miles. Well, since then, hot air balloons have become a thing where people like to go out and have fun. There are hot air balloon festivals all around the United States. Well, exactly how do hot air balloons work? The hot air balloon has four main parts. The first one is the basket. The basket is what carries the passengers, the pilot, and the burner or the gas tanks. Also, the next part are the cables. The cables are steel wire that attach the basket to the actual balloon connected together. The next part is called the envelope, the actual balloon. The envelope is made of tough nylon fabric that has been stitched together, made of different panels around. And last is the burner. The burner is what heats the air inside the balloon, which allows the balloon to actually float. The reason why the balloon floats is because when the air is, uh, when the air is heated by the gas pump and the flames go up inside the balloon, the air becomes less dense than the air that's surrounded on the outside. The air on the inside of the balloon suddenly begins to disperse out faster and wider compared to all the air that's surrounded around it. And that is what we call buoyancy. And buoyancy allows things to float. Remember with buoyancy, buoyancy is what allows things to float. In order for these objects to float in the water or on the water, they have to be less dense than the actual water itself. If the object has greater density than the water, the object will sink. So let's test out the marble. All right, so the marble is sunk to the bottom. That means it has a greater density. That means that the molecules are tighter in that marble compared to the water. Let's test, test out this ball. It is larger, but are the molecules compact as tight? This ball actually floats, meaning that it has less density than the actual water. 
That is the same principle with the hot air balloon. As the air gets hotter and hotter on the inside, that air becomes less dense than all the air that's surrounding it and it begins to float. And that's what makes that balloon go up, up, up and away. Now, the pilot is in control of the burner and the pilot determines how much heat it needs to give in order for it to float, how less heat to give in order to bring it back down and land safely. Now, let's see if we can make a hot air balloon and do a test with it. The materials you will need are glue, scissors, pencil, this is uh, the template for the panels, tissue paper, and some regular paper. I will leave a link below to this template that you can use to make um, your uh, own template. I just use cardstock and then you can uh, make it the size that you want. They give you the dimensions on the template. First step, we're going to take our pattern and put it on six sheets of tissue paper. You want to fold these six sheets of paper and make sure they're lined up well and then you're going to trace. Next, you're going to cut out your panels remember I always tell you if you mess up start over again it's okay Now that you've cut out, you're going to have panels. So what we're going to do next, we're going to take two panels and glue one side together And I'm going to do this with all of the panels. I'm going to take two and glue them together only on one side, remember. Make sure they seal well. Now that we have our panels glued together, we're going to stack the three panels that are glued together. Okay. We want the glue edges turned away from us. Let's stack these up. All right, we're going to take the first sheet, fold it back, and we're going to glue the next two sheets together with these two. We'll get it straight. A little bit off but that's okay all right now fold this one back make sure it's sealed 
I'm just checking it. Now we're going to glue these two panels together. Now that we have our panels, we should have this top one loose and the back one loose. We're going to take these two panels and glue together. it up as best as possible. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so now we have that one glued together. Now you should be able to open your balloon and you want to fluff it out. All right, so I sealed the top. I just kind of glued it together at the top, just pinched it and glued it together. I still need to get my panels opened all the way up, but in the meantime, we want to make a bottom so that, you know, it, it doesn't burn up. It's like a, um, a cover at the bottom around the edge of it. So I'm just going to take some plain paper, you can just use regular white paper, and cut it into strips and glue it around. Now I will pinch it in so that way it's not um, this wide open at the bottom. to see if the heat works with our hot air balloon. One of the things you want to notice is that if I just take the hot air balloon and drop it, it's just going to come straight down because of gravity. There's no buoyancy. The air on the inside is the same as the air on the outside. So the buoyancy effect does not work just by dropping it. We do need hot air. So let's try it. See the difference? I want you to add cargo to your hot air balloon to see if it floats higher or as high when you did not have cargo. Cargo can be, you know, like the passengers would be. You could use paper clips. You could use, um, maybe glue something on it, like an eraser or attach a pencil, something on there so that you can test it with the cargo. I have one. Okay, friends, remember, in order for a hot air balloon to go up, it needs that burner to give the heat. The heat is what makes the air gets warmer, and when the air gets warmer, compared to the air that's surrounding it on the outside, the balloon will float. As the, if the air cools off on the inside and becomes the same temperature as the air on the outside, then the, air, the balloon will begin to sink back down to earth. All right, friends, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you make a hot air balloon and leave me a comment about what happened when you added cargo to your hot air balloon. See you next time, guys. Have a wonderful day.